Good morning to everyone. I thank God for our service thus far. I thank God for his spirit uh, that is among us. Even though we're in virtual space, I pray that the spirit of God is moving in and around you even now. Hallelujah. I pray that you're praying, even in your spirit, uh, not only for this word, but just for us um, as a world, as, as a country, um, as families, as a community. I think this is so important, an important time that we understand the need for prayer um, in our country and in our world. I thank God for everything that he's done in this last 18 months under the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, it's been horrible for lots of people, but I must say from a spiritual perspective, it's been really rich and it continues to be rich as we focus ourselves on the Lord. And God is, any, every message has been, been, really been about focusing more on God and his word and executing his word in the earth. And so I'm excited to continue our um, sermon today and our series that we started even last week. Um, I pray that your heart is ready. I thank God for the prayer this morning. I pray that your heart is ready to receive this morning. I think it's important. So I want to thank God for community connections as well. I enjoy that moment that we have in the Arbor Restoration Center as a community. It's really important to connect. And so that part is really um, sticks out for me, especially th today. So those that are praying and asking for us to pray for you to be steadfast or to endure, I think that's the right spirit that's in the atmosphere today, is that we have this spirit to endure, a spirit for steadfastness, because that's what we need in this hour. Many people are getting distracted, they're thrown off. And sometimes when you don't understand who you are and you don't can't understand then where I am and what's going on in my life. And I pray that folks are really paying attention to what God is speaking to your heart. And so I thank you uh, for being here this morning. And let's just enjoy the Lord and his word and just please pray throughout God's word that it finds good ground to fall into your hearts today. Remembering our vision, vision victory for this year and this scripturally inspired statement. I love reading it. It's important to read it even into the atmosphere. The Lord fights on our behalf. He destroys our enemies as we keep our eyes on him. He is our shield and our covering. He is our great reward. Run the race to the end. The victory has been won by Christ, our champion, our deliverer, our king. As long as we remain in him, we can never be defeated. So I pray that you really settled in those that went and got your pads and your um, Bible. I really hope that you've done that because I also know in this spirit that many people have gotten comfortable in the virtual space. Some people don't even bother getting dressed um, because they're coming to church virtually. They don't have to go on camera. And I said last week, that's an attitude you want to be careful of. We're not getting dressed for each other or approaching the day for someone else. We're really approaching it for God. So whatever you were doing before the pandemic, I say you keep it up and, 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 and come before the Lord in, in a way that you can bring in him your best. Um, so I pray that you are ready and you're interested in what God has to say. Some people, um, you know, exhausted from the week and they just come to church just to get whatever they can. And there are some that come with intention, intention to to hear from God, to be motivated. I heard that in Community Connections as well. They, they want to be stirred up. They want instructions for the next week. You know, I was thinking this week, I understand why God um, rested on the seventh day because he was busy doing kingdom work um, for those days. And I think of the days, uh, you know, we should all be focused on kingdom work every single day to the point where we need to rest. But I wonder, and in the church today, when the church got shut down due to COVID, uh, folks realize really what are you really up to? Is, is it just busy work or was it really kingdom work? And so I want to continue to talk about the kingdom. This is the second part. It says the kingdom culture and cultural influence. And we really need to pay attention to what should things be like now, even under COVID and even in the threatening of Delta. Um, people are continuing to walk in uncertainty and fear. And there's great opportunities that God has created even during the pandemic that many have taken advantage of. But where is the kingdom culture showing up? And where is the kingdom culture influence that we can have even in this hour? So I want to talk more about the kingdom culture influence today. And the subtitle is Taking Territory with Authority and Power. Taking Territory with Authority and Power. And again, in a kingdom, it involves territory and really taking back territory that belongs to God, that belongs to the children of God, the people of God. And we see the havoc that the enemy has wreaked in people's lives. And we need to go out and be about reclaiming, renewing, restoring 
that territory that the enemy has taken. So please get that in your spirit. We're just talking again about the kingdom culture uh, and having influence and really taking territory with authority and power. And so suiting up. So you can't do anything if you don't have authority and power. So suiting up, knowing who you are, your identity, that's what this month's theme is about, suiting up. We talked about putting on the whole armor of God, but again, you need to know who you are. We're talking about being kingdom citizens. Again, children of God, amen. Children of the king, amen, which means we have inheritance. We're part of a kingdom. And so really suiting up and understanding what that means. I think that's what God wants us to focus on, not just for ourselves as a community, but we think of our brothers and sisters, all all over the globe. We are kingdom citizens that have actually instructions and a charge from God that we should be executing on every day. It's not just about living for ourselves and building our own little kingdoms, your, your house, your job, and the things that you acquire, because those things fade. We all should have this mindset. And I heard someone else said, having a focused mind. Yeah, we should have this this my a kingdom mindset focus and and it really applies to us on a daily basis so suiting up is what this month is about and as we suit up then what is it that we need to be doing as far as demonstrating kingdom culture and I want to say divine purposes are already deposited in us. There are so many scriptures that let us know that. And Jeremiah, you read, before you were even like formed in the womb, God knows us. Each of us has divine purposes. And some of us may be going through things or living in a condition that's not really reflective of God's purpose in your life. And you need to understand that. Some people that live compromised need to know, I wasn't intended to live this way. God doesn't want me living this way. He sent his son, Jesus, that I may have life in that more abundantly. I could be live better than I'm living. And I want that and because there's a divine purpose to my life. And I want that purpose fulfilled. That can become your prayer singly sometimes. Lord, I want your divine purposes fulfilled in my life. And if you're sincere about that prayer alone, then God will bring about his divine purposes in your life. Because again, he sent Jesus. So Jesus has paid the price. He's victorious. And that victory belongs to us. And so you can claim that. As I'm interceding and praying for those that are struggling, struggling with addictions and things, that's not your divine purpose, right? And so you can be free from those things. And you need to pursue that and understand that divine purposes are already deposited in us. And each of us here in this community, God has a specific purpose for you. And you need to fulfill that purpose in this earth and really have it kingdom reflected. Also, there's power. The Bible lets us know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we should not ever feel defeated because it doesn't matter what comes against us. Christ conquered all things. Amen. And that victory he's given us and allowed his spirit to live in us. And so these are just facts that you have to live with, facts that are supported by God's word. God's word is life. And when you remind yourself of God's word, you will have life. And so when you experience fear, you have to say, no, God has not given me this spirit of fear. I can't allow this fear to take over my life. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And so you have to really make these declarations because again, I'm a kingdom citizen and I have access to this power that Christ has given to me. And so again, these are important to understand as you understand your identity and suiting up. You need to know who you are first and foremost, because if you don't know who you are, you're going to run out there in battle and you will get defeated. And so many focus on the sin in our lives, right? That we see, right? That you neglect the iniquity that's really in the heart. And it reminds me of that woman um, when it was caught in adultery, right? Everyone sees the sin. And there's so many things that we see. We see sin. And church people are always ready to call out people's sin because you see it. But there's so much that you don't see. And that's that you, we think we know so much. But there's this iniquity, which is this higher level of sin, because it's hidden and revealed even from us at times. And that's why David prayed, God, search my heart. Find that hidden iniquity, those thoughts that I have that are already sinful, even before they come out. Like God said, when you think things in your heart, then that's sinful. People are evil. You are uh, angry towards them. You think nasty thoughts towards other people. You may never say them, but that is iniquity in your heart. People that have envy and jealousy and, and holding on to harboring bad feelings, those are iniquity that are hidden deep in your heart. And many people think they're okay because you're saying, I'm not out there sinning. Oh, I don't go to the club. I don't cuss. I don't swear. But again, that hidden stuff that you don't even know about. And I imagine that when Jesus asked those who knew no sin to throw the first stone, many people walked away because iniquity is something that God sees. Hallelujah. It's even hidden from us. And that's why 
you have to be careful in your own life. So when there's no power, you're finding it's hard to get over some things. Or then when there's no power in your life, because he's given us power, we have victory, right? So when you don't see any power in your lives, we should ask the question, hey, what's the problem here? And you have a right to ask that yourself that. What is the problem here that I can't get over the hump? because he's given me power. So there must be something in my life. And so sometimes you just need to check your heart because something could be hidden in there that's preventing you from having power. Hallelujah. Check out your heart. And so we're talking about the kingdom, not church. I'm so tired of church, 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 because we think that the kingdom of God is all about what we see in the church, the organized church system. And there are many people that are tired of the church. People in the church are tired of the church. People outside of the church are tired of the church. Everyone's just tired of the church, the organized religion. We talked last week about the kingdom of God. We talked, Jesus talked about his church, which is very different from what we have made it, especially in the West, because we've made it just a prosperity scene. We've made it just a high blessings scene. But the kingdom of God is very different. Hallelujah. And you need to understand what we're engaged in. And as kingdom citizens, you're not just church members. And that's why, again, under the pandemic, many churches have closed and some people don't know what to do. They have not even gotten into the virtual experience. Why? Because they're so focused about the church. God told us to put a church on the market. Why? Because God has some plans for us in the future. And I'm Focus now, I'm like so desperately seeking God. What is it that you want us to do? Because it's not going back to what we thought church was. So uh, building, yes, but not just a church building. God wants to give us something more to bring us into what ministry needs to be about in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 years, should the Lord tarry. So kingdom citizens need to be kingdom minded. So I want to know, Lord, what is on your mind? And we talked about then being kingdom citizens. We talked about being a disruptor. Then you have to understand that's part of who you are, right? Jesus disrupts world systems, every world system around us. Jesus, when he came, he disrupted. And therefore, we as kingdom citizens, followers of Jesus Christ, not followers of a church, a denomination, but followers of Jesus Christ, we are going to disrupt systems. And so instead of the church people saying, hey, just come, let's just stay insulated as a church, we need to be sending people out to go and change and transform systems, world systems, world powers, because he's given us power over these systems. And so why should we stay hiding inside of a church building while the enemy is taking our young people, while the enemy is taking people through drugs and alcohol addiction, while the enemy is taking people through violence, while the enemy is taking people through mental depression? Why should we stay isolated? We need to be out there and conquering the systems, looking at the culture that's causing the things that happen in the system. We need to suit up as kingdom citizens to be disruptors. And so that's why I'm talking to you. I'm looking for kingdom citizens to advance the kingdom of God for the rest of my life. That's where I am right now. And so I'm talking to you as a kingdom citizen. We have to disrupt the systems around us. I'm not looking for church business as we've learned it, many of us, but I'm we're looking for to build the church, the Jesus's church, right? The power of God has been given to us to build the church of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God in the earth. That's what we're talking about. So disrupting, shaking up, challenging, changing systems. That's what we should be about. Not just waiting to come to church on Sunday, but what have you been doing Monday through Friday and on Saturdays? Where are you working? Where are you doing? What is your vocation? Are you disrupting, shaking up things? Do you challenge things? Kings and citizens of the kingdom of God will find themselves in opposition with worldly kingdoms. And so you find yourself walking hand in hand and no one has a problem with you when you deal with other systems then that's something wrong there. And not only will we find ourselves in opposition with worldly kingdoms, we also we find ourselves in opposition with spiritual kingdoms that are not of God. And that's why there's so, you talk about the different spirits that are in the earth and spiritual kingdoms that are trying to rise up against God. They don't work because one God, our God, Hallelujah. Jesus is not a prophet, just a prophet. Amen. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is Christ, the anointed one, the only son of God. He is not like Muhammad and Buddha and no other prophet. He doesn't have to come and say, thus saith the Lord. He is the Lord and he can say, I say. Hallelujah. It's a difference. You have to understand that. Hallelujah. We are under the kingdom of God. 
So kingdoms will collide, kingdoms will clash, and kingdoms will conflict when you are operating under the authority and power that God has given us. And that's what you want to tap into. That's why you have to be in your word of God. You're not going to get this through some little TikTok that someone's sending you. You're not going to get it through just reading about someone else's thought. But when you engage in the word of God yourself and those purposes and things that are in you get stirred up, and that's why Paul told them, stir it up, stir up the things that are in you that can come out and mess manifest so the kingdom can be advanced. But when it does, understand kingdoms are going to collide. You're not going to agree with everyone. Everyone's not going to agree with you. And we're in Matthew 16, 15 to 20, and keep reading that as we're in this series, but I'm focusing it on verse 19. It says, I will give you the keys. That is the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus talking to his disciples. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples those strict orders not to tell anyone that he was Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Hallelujah. But this I'm emphasizing the keys, which means authority. So we have this authority, the authority that even Adam lost in the garden. Remember, and that's why it's so important. I'm glad in this community we emphasize the beginning, creation. You need to understand Genesis. You need to understand creation because everything was established right there in the beginning. God giving us authority, God giving us dominion. And again, understanding that, hallelujah. The, the enemy doesn't understand, hallelujah, what is going on because God knows more than the enemy. But God gave us authority, hallelujah, that Adam lost in the garden. And this authority is connected to dominion, right, or kingdom. And the word kingdom means radah right? Dominion, governing authority over territory. And that is why you need to understand we can't accomplish some things. And that means it's territory. And in a spiritual sense, hallelujah, as well as a actual natural um, sense as well. So I'm looking for land in any kind of way. Hallelujah. Whatever territory God wants us to occupy for the kingdom, we want to declare it for the kingdom. When we look at system, we want to declare that kingdom, that territory, the political territory, we want to claim it for God. May God infiltrate that territory with kingdom citizens, that they may be in office and execute laws that make sense and align with God's word. Are you hearing me? We're praying that God, hallelujah, his kingdom will come in the education realm, in schools, hallelujah. And so teachers that are teaching will align with the kingdom of God principles and values. We're talking about taking territory and we have the power to do that. We have, Jesus gave this authority, right? In Genesis 1 and 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have what? Dominion. I cannot hear you, but you need to say the word out loud in your own atmosphere and let them have dominion. Hallelujah. Dominion, governing authority and power. Hallelujah. Over the fish, over the fowl, over the cattle, over the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Dominion. Say it out loud. Dominion. And this imago Deo, right? This image of God is an important, did you understand it? Because the image of God is the idea in scripture that is connected to the kingdom of God. You and I cannot execute and act like we're kingdom citizens if you don't understand how you were created in the image of God. Hallelujah. So you try to act like something else. Hallelujah. You're not going to execute on kingdom work. Hallelujah. You have to understand who you are and who we are in relation to who our God is. Hallelujah. Which helps us understand who I am to be. Who I am is related to who God is. That helps me understand who I am to be in the earth. Hallelujah. I'm creating God's image. Hallelujah. That's why I'm not the, the tail, hallelujah. I, I come forth, hallelujah. I don't die, I live, hallelujah. I'm in God's image and I'm able to execute dominion and authority as God has given me. And you read on more in the verse 27 to 28. So God then created man his image, right? His own image, the image of God created him, male and female created he them. Verse 28, and God blessed them. This is an important piece. Hallelujah, because my identity, suit up with this. I am blessed. Hallelujah, not some old re religious saying, I'm blessed and highly favored. No, don't just say that. Hallelujah, do you understand that God has blessed us? God blessed man. And when the blessings of God are upon you, you can't lose. And God blessed them. And God then said these few things, five things. He says, be fruitful. Hallelujah. So you need to tell yourself, you need to be fruitful. If you have a lazy spirit, say laziness can't live here. Be fruitful 
if you're complacent, no, 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 I'm to be fruitful, hallelujah. And then he says to multiply, hallelujah. Be fruitful and multiply, increase, hallelujah. I can expect increase in my life and I can speak it in my tongue because there's power of life and death in the tongue. Why? Because I have authority that's been given to me so I can speak some things into existence, hallelujah, according to God and his will be done. And so he says to be fruitful, to multiply, replenish the earth, and not just in the physical, making babies, but we're talking about new souls for the kingdom of God and getting new kingdom citizens. Replenish this earth. And he says, subdue it, and again, have dominion. Hallelujah. Dominion. Hallelujah. This authority, this governing authority over everything. Hallelujah. And I love Psalm 8. I just want to read it again. Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens. Understand and see this. Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you've established strength on account of your adversaries in order to silence the enemy and vengeful foe. When I look to the heavens, hallelujah, look out the universe, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars that you established back in Genesis, right? And what man? that thou took notice of him and the son of man that you pay attention to him, us. Verse five, you made him a little less than divine, but you crowned him with glory and honor. Hallelujah. You gave him what? Dominion over the work. Everything God did those days. Hallelujah. He gave us dominion, power. He shared that with us. Hallelujah. He gave it to us. Hallelujah. So what we need to do in this hour, we have power to do and we have authority to do it because he gave us dominion. And I'm taking back the dominion that my brother Adam lost, putting all things under our feet. Hallelujah. And that includes the enemy. Hallelujah. He has no power over us that which we just give him. Sheep and cattle, all of them, the wild creatures in the field, the birds in the air, the fish in the sea, whatever moves through the currents of the ocean, Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And that's just a good psalm to read out loud sometime. So the kingdom of God is central to Jesus's message, right? So kingdom, we need to be kingdom minded, kingdom focused, kingdom motivated, and kingdom driven. Hallelujah. We don't have time to be lazy. People that are going through, always going through. But when are you going to get through the going through that you're going through? When you're kingdom minded, it doesn't matter that you're struggling financially because you trust that God is going to work it out. Because when it comes to staying focused, you are kingdom minded and kingdom focused. Hallelujah. It's not just about, oh, I didn't get this. I didn't get that from God. I'm still motivated to execute the kingdom of God because it's not based on things. And so being kingdom minded and focused and motivated and driven is very different. It's opposed to being church focused. Oh, what are we doing for the church? Oh, the church this, the church numbers, the church this, the church that. Uh-uh. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I do kingdom every single day. Like all of us should be doing kingdom every single day because part of our prayers, Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Hallelujah. Even before you leave the house, the job that you're doing, if you're over 25, you should have, be in a place where God wants you for as a job, right? And not wasting your time on a job you don't like. But kingdom mind and kingdom focus, you'll find out where they need to be in the earth and you get there. Hallelujah. You don't have to struggle. Ask God and he'll take you there. Take me to my destined place, God. Hallelujah. And I can only testify my own personal experience over 30 years being in a kingdom job that God gave me, not man. And I can testify on different levels how God gave me the job. Hallelujah. And everything I've been, position I've had, he has caused a promotion. No one else, not even Ken. Hallelujah. So we need more testimonies. How many of you are kingdom employees? Hallelujah. And we talk about the kingdom of God being comprised of those five elements, right? It's about authority. It's about laws, about governments, about citizenship and culture. Talked a lot about culture, but I'm leaning in on citizenship. This identity, right? That has been, we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Spend time understanding what that means. The way I live, the way I dress, the way I talk, all of that should change because God's kingdom has come into my life. And so your nationality has changed. It doesn't matter what your heritage, your culture is. Bring that with you, but it does not supersede being a kingdom citizen, hallelujah, a born again believer, hallelujah, and you are now a, 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 a kingdom, a citizen of the kingdom of God. 
And so culture is about influence. Being a kingdom culture is influencing the earth's culture with the kingdom of God culture. You cannot do that. You want to go into a certain industry, make sure you're going as a representative of heaven and watch how God transforms that culture with you. When it comes to government, when we're a kingdom government, we're under the government of God. That's what that means. We have government in the earth, but I'm under the government of God. There are laws in the earth, but again, there are laws of God that we obey as kingdom citizens. And the authority in which we operate in the earth realm, we're operating under the authority of God. And here is the thing. The authority that God has given us to operate in this world, it comes from the heavenly um, level. It comes from God himself, who is no, you need to know God of heaven and he's God of earth. And so there's nobody on earth that can tell me that God's authority is not higher than man's authority because the earth is the Lord's, right? Hallelujah, the fullness thereof. Everything in it belongs to him. Hallelujah, whether you want to believe it or not, the Bible lets me know that God created all things and there's only one ultimate creator and that's the creator God. Hallelujah. So do you have confidence that you can influence culture? See, some uh, Christians are just afraid. You don't think you can really do it. You're afraid that too many of them, they won't listen to me. They don't, they don't need to listen to you. They need to listen to the Holy Spirit in you. Hallelujah. You can influence systems in the world. And you need to have confidence that you can do that. Hallelujah. People don't like that confidence. They call it other things. But I'm confident. I am confident in this worthy thing that God will complete everything that he began. I'm very confident that God is faithful. I'm confident that God's word does not fall to the ground. He accomplished it. That what he sent to do. Oh, I have confidence. Hallelujah. That I win and not lose. I have confidence that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I have confidence that I am not going to lose. That I am more than a conqueror in this. Hallelujah. Kingdom purposes. So walking with confidence also is important because we have to influence the world. World changes, world shifters. Hallelujah. Influencing the world. And what are we talking about? Make it real. Make it plain. Let's get out of the clouds. Let's be real. These churches that are trying to keep you insulated and talk about these great things within the church. I'm talking about God's kingdom, which is outside of the church. We're talking about influence in your home. What's wrong with Christian mothers and fathers? How are you leading a godly home and setting up the atmosphere and the culture at your home? Hallelujah. That it reflects God's kingdom, not just you serving God and letting your children do what they want to do. Hallelujah. Not you how just praying at church and not praying at home. What is the environment of the home like? Hallelujah. Influence your home. If you're the only one saved in your home, then get on a kingdom mission and save your home. Forget going to Asia and Africa and other places of mission. Now, although that's great work. Don't get me wrong. Do that later. But there's nothing wrong with making your first ministry your home. Influence your home with the kingdom culture. Influence the community. That's what we're talking about here as a community together. We want to come together and influence our community around us. We want to see families healthy and whole. That's what we want to do. We want to influence the community around us. And industry. Don't be afraid to go into industry. Influence the industry. Everything is not just insulated in a church. You can think about, I want to be at a Fortune 500 company. Our God has given me intellect and, and finance. I talked about little Ethan. I, I really believe that he is destined to be in the financial realm, in that industry. And so praying for that to come forth is kind of what I do all the time about him because I know he's made for the financial industry. And some of you, you have your interest and in politics, and we all should pay attention. Jesus came not just for the, she didn't come for the church and religious system, did he? Jesus came and dealt with the politician. He dealt with the governmental system. He even dealt with the religious system, which is the one system that was against him. Hello? So don't be surprised that people in the church have a problem with the kingdom of God when they don't understand it. We should be influencing education. I'm talking to you educators out there that are listening to me today. You should be influencing that realm. Not If it's just a job for you, then you're just getting a paycheck. If it's more than a job, then you're getting satisfied that the kingdom of God is being executed. Influencing medicine. Come on, hallelujah. How are we going to influence the world if we're not influencing these cultures around us? Influencing science. Thank God that God has scientists out there refuting what the world says about God, that God knowledge. God has done great things through science. Influencing business. How you, don't you love to meet Christian business owners? How did that have succeeded and that are up there with the world? Absolutely. So influence business, influence sports. Isn't it nice to see Christians that are like stars and, and leading things? It's wonderful. We are to influence the world, influence the culture, influencing entertainment. 
influencing fashion. I talked about the young man last week, and hopefully I'm going to share some of that with you when God lets me to talk about what is going on in culture around us, what God has been showing up for decades now, and God is bringing these things forth in this hour for a reason. We are to influence culture. We cannot transform the world without influencing the culture. Hallelujah. We need to influence the earth. That's why God put us in charge. He gave us that dominion to take care of the earth. Hello. I'm, I'm clear today. Hallelujah. That is the earth he gave us hallelujah, to care for. Hallelujah. And to take care of. Hallelujah. It is God's. The earth is God's and the fullness thereof. And we have been given it to care for it and to have dominion over it. First John 4 and 4. So ye are God, little children. Ye have overcome them because great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. There's nothing that we cannot do when it comes to executing the kingdom of God in the earth. Revelation eleven fifteen and the seven angels sounded and there were great voices in heaven said the kingdoms of this world became the kingdoms of our Lord. Hallelujah! I must say that again. Do you understand what God has said to us? The kingdoms of this world, and that's why we're not talking about a church. We're talking about a kingdom because even in the church, people try to set their own little kingdoms. Everyone wants to control and manage their own little kingdom, but the kingdoms of this world that the enemy has set up and helped others set up now belong to our Lord. He took them back. He was victorious over, hallelujah. They belong to the Lord and his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Not you king, not you king, but King Jesus reigns forever and ever and there's nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah, let God's kingdom reign in your life. Influence this culture. And if you understand that today, the question is, are you an influencer? And people are one way or the other. Some, you're influencing for good or negative. Hallelujah. If you're an influencer of God, then you should be influencing. Hallelujah. These Christians uh, act like they're doing such great things in God. The question is, well, what are you influencing? How there's got to be a measure. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to see. Let me know what you're doing. Are you influencing, Mr. Influencer, or Mrs. Influencer? Hallelujah. Let's look and look for the kingdom. Pray God's kingdom come. Hallelujah. You got a king, hallelujah. Then the king has to have a kingdom, hallelujah. And if we're citizens of this kingdom, then we should be kingdoming. A word I may, I know it's not a real word, but kingdoming. That's what we all should be doing as believers and followers of Christ, bringing the kingdom in the earth, kingdoming, hallelujah. What are you doing for your vocation? I'm kingdoming. What are you doing in your music? I'm kingdoming. Hallelujah. What are you doing in, as a pastor? I am kingdoming. That's what I'm doing. What am I doing for my job? I'm kingdoming. Hallelujah. As a parent, I'm kingdoming. Hallelujah. We're citizens of the King Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're citizens of the kingdom of God. And so we should be kingdoming in every area of our life. And I know this is important because Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 4, it says, as you go, wherever you go, preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Tell somebody about the kingdom of God. Preach this message, not your own. Hallelujah. Not the one that sounds good, that appeals to this group or that group, because God knew that everyone would be having their own little message. What he says, preach this message, the kingdom. Is your message a kingdom message? Are you talking about King Jesus? Are you talking about the kingdom power that shakes chains and breaks them? Is that the kingdom you're talking about? Because he says, preach this message, preach kingdom. Hallelujah. Talk kingdom, live kingdom. Hallelujah. And I'm wrapping up it here, but building this culture of the kingdom, that's what I'm focused on right now. So Lord, help us. How I love when God comes again. I feel like a little kid again with the God, with God. Because God says it's about building a culture. That's what we're doing, Arbor Restoration. So I love that God shook up everything, right? And so here we are kind of evolving and transforming into something else. And you understand the transformative stage. I feel like we're in that holding state, that last stage, that chrysalis, and we're going to be coming out soon, and God is strengthening us. Don't be weary in well-doing, he says. How Don't jump ship because, oh, what's going on there? No, don't jump. How God's about to do some things. Building a culture. The apostles built a culture to take over a culture. <laughs> you see it, but I'm going to say it again. The apostles built a culture to take over culture. Hallelujah. When the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came and, and, and did such a mighty work, it didn't just come for the moment. See, people like the moment, the move of God. But that should happen every day. We should want to live in that every day, not just go for these moments. People chase after revivals here and there because they like those special moves. But how many know that he should be moving every day in your life? 
Hallelujah. Why I know that? Because afterwards in verse 42 of Acts 2, it says what? And they continue steadfastly. And somebody said in community connections, right? Help me to be more steadfast. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles in doctrine and fellowship. You want to keep growing in God. You want to be victorious. You want to stand. You want to suit up. You want to have vision, victory, and have victory. Then you need to continue in doctrine and fellowship. You need to continue to read your Bible. You need to continue to pray. You need to continue fasting. Don't stop those things. Don't just do them for a special occasion. But they continue in doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. The fellowship, connecting. Don't stop those things. We need to continue to break bread and to pray. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Not because they had special names, but because they continued steadfastly in doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. When you pray, hallelujah, when you read God's word, when he's feeding you every day, great things are going to happen. Wonders and signs were done. Hallelujah. And all that believe were together and had things in common. We're looking for kingdom believers and kingdom saints. Hallelujah. That understand God's kingdom so we can be on one accord. Because it's a beautiful thing when we're all together and on one accord. Hallelujah. They sold their possessions and parted from all men to make sure everyone had need. No selfishness among us, right? And they continuing daily. There's this continuation again, right? Continuing daily with one accord. Hallelujah. In the temple, the breaking of bread, house to house. They ate their meat, meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. I've never seen so many uh, Christians that don't, that people don't like them. Why don't, because they're not Christian, they're looking at them as church people. The people around that don't like church people, but they should like them. We should have favor with people. I think we can get along with everyone, but people should not. Wow, those folks down there are really committed. They, they are continued. They are there every day. There are people that uh, you should be praying for. They not, I pray for people not because they come to this community. I've got to put people in your pathway. And for me, it's not about being pastor candidate. It says, here is somebody that God has put in my pathway. They're on my long list of prayer. And that's why I'm not available. I'm sometimes just thinking about those people and praying. Why? Because that's what God wants us to do, praying for people. Hallelujah. Lamentations 3, 22 to 24. It is all of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. So I need to thank God for his mercy, especially all that iniquity that's in us, things that are holding us back. Thank you for your mercy, God, because his compassions fail not. They are renewed every morning. Hallelujah. That's why the pen writer wrote the song, Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, every morning. And that's why just coming to church on a Sunday, that's not enough. Who are you impressing? But every day you get to get renewed and that experience they have on the day of Pentecost, you can have that in the morning. I pray for God's spirit, fill me now today before I go. And I always tell you, it's hard for me to have a bad day because my day begins with the Lord. And God is faithful. Hallelujah. There's not one day he has not been present. Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. And that's why I love the Lord's prayer. Matthew 6 and 11 says what? So give us this day our what? Daily bread. You have to come to him every day, people. My brothers and sisters, you cannot take vacation or what? No, you need to be seeking him every day. Hallelujah. And so that's our prayer. Father, sustain us. Hallelujah. You want to be sustained? You want to continue? Then do what you did to get here. Hallelujah, that prayer, that fasting, those spiritual disciplines, hallelujah, consecrating yourself, thinking on the things of God. You know, people are all into their phones listening to messages that people are sending you. Do people, everybody you communicate with, are they sending you and encouraging things that build you up, that talk about the kingdom? Or they're talking about a bunch of foolishness, want to laugh and joke all the time. Send me something that sustains me. So that's a prayer to the Lord. Lord, sustain us, right? Because Jesus reminded those disciples that their, their, their defining feature, here it is, your defining feature to the world is that you belong to the king, is that we love one another, right? You can see it among each other. There's such a division in the organized church, isn't it? Ha! Huh. But Jesus' church, you see love. Hallelujah. I've 
witnessed some things this week. I said, wow, the love of God is just everywhere. And God is doing things. He, he's concerned about the poor. He didn't say church people. He's concerned about the poor, those that are, are, are outside in the fringes of life. And I see God doing great things to take care of those people. Even when the church is not moving, God is. And so again, I see the love of God, this true agape, unconditional love. When you see people that are kingdom citizens executing that, it is beautiful. That's how people know. That's a defining feature, not your fancy church, not your many church numbers, not all the money that your church has and so forth and so on, but it's just true love that they see. They know you're a true kingdom citizen. So my encouragement today, tap into the kingdom culture and tap should help you remember, take territory with authority and power. Things that you feel you've been defeated on, I'm telling you to get yourself together and take authority over those things. Take that territory. The enemy is taking something from you, taking ground, then get that ground back. Hallelujah. He slowed you down and it's now August and you, you're behind on where you want it to be. Doesn't matter. Take back that territory with the power and authority that God has given you, the keys that Jesus gave us to advance his kingdom. Hallelujah. And I want to say this. It's about being a worshiper, worshiping the king. And I don't have time to get into this, but I wanted to share this piece with you. When you understand Genesis and the creation, it gets you to the story about Lucifer. Remember, he was created to worship and he lost his position. And then we were created to do what? To worship him. Hallelujah, in essence, take his place. Hallelujah. So when you think about why he hates us or why he wants to distract us and, 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 and get us off from worshiping God, because that was his job. But let, understand this. When you read Ezekiel 28, it is so clear. God let him know you will never, ever get your job back. Never. There's an end for you, Lucifer, and all of those angels you took with you. Satan doesn't understand who he is anymore because his identity is broken. He's lost his position. And just like us, when you're not walking in with God, when you can't truly worship him, you're out of position and out of place. That's why he didn't know what to do. That's why he came down here and destroyed the earth and God had to show up and it was void and empty because he, he couldn't maintain. He had no power. Hallelujah. He couldn't bring the earth to life. That's why he died. Hallelujah. In a sense. So worshiping God and, and true worship of God, that's why God's looking for those because that's what he wants, worship. And there's a church view of worship. And I know we're seeing a lot of worshipers. That's kind of the thing now, right? We're in an age where it's this worship happening all the time. And there's a nice church view of that, right? Which is an earthly experience. People like it, you know, people kind of get in that groove. This is it, this is it. But I just want to caution us. Hallelujah. The church view is an earthly experience, but there's a kingdom view of what worship really is. Satan was not like the angels that said, holy, holy, holy. He was closer to God in worship. He's right around God. Very different. Kingdom view, that heavenly experience of worship, it's really different. How so we shouldn't think we're so high because I'm this great worshiper. I have albums out. I do this, I do that. But we'll be very careful. Hallelujah. And we should be grateful that we can enter into the presence of God. Satan, Lucifer lost being in the presence of God. Hallelujah. He, didn't, he couldn't come back when he wanted to. And Job, he, God says, where you been? He says, to and from the earth. He couldn't come where God was anymore. He was kicked out. And, and I and read that. I think God kicked out and put fire behind his, I was gonna, behind his tail, but behind him. Amen. Judgment. So the heavenly experience of worship is, is not the same as earth. So don't get stuck there. Cherish the opportunity we have to worship God in beauty and holiness. Because see, on the earth realm, right, we worship so many things. We end up worshiping artists. We worship things. And, and God knows it's so easy for us to make idols. And that's why he says have no other idol before him. Because it's, when we're worshiping, it's easy to worship stuff. But the thing is, when you're worshiping God, you're always worshiping just to one. And that is to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for true worshipers. Hallelujah. They're not caught up in what they see around them, but they understand. Hallelujah. I'm in the presence of of God. So I encourage you, kingdom cultural hallelujah, influence. Hallelujah. Take territory with the power and authority that we have.
God bless you. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the series that you're taking us on, God, motivating us and stirring us up to get busy on kingdom work as opposed to this personal work that some of us have gotten caught up into. We thank you that you do take care of us because you're concerned about us on every level, God. But why? We know you'll take care of us. Holly, we want to make sure that we're taking care of kingdom work kingdom business. So we pray for your strength even now, God. Continue revelation of what the kingdom influence needs to be in this hour. We thank you, God. Hallelujah, that you're merciful and kind, that you're even allowing us to understand more. And we just pray that we receive more from you. Lead us, guide us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.